do a problem that involves algebra with an angle bisector. The first thing I always do when I'm doing a problem like this is to sketch a picture. And it does tell me to do that. Sketch a picture of the situation. Let's read through it really fast first so we kind of know what we're drawing. Given that Kn, that's supposed to be a ray, ray bi Kn bisects angle JKL, and then it has some measurements that I want to be able to write into my picture. So I'm going to start by creating angle JKL. So I'm just, I can use a ruler if I want. It doesn't have to be even that perfect. Though. Just sketch an angle and label it JKL. Now, it also the problem tells us that KN is a bisector of the angle. So that means we want to start a ray at point K because that K and that K are the same letter. And we want it to be a bisector, so we want it to be in the middle. If you want it to be more exact, you can use the construction we just learned. Or you can just sketch it and try and get it as even as you can. But don't worry about it being perfect. The picture is just to help us. It doesn't have to be perfect. As long as you mark the fact that these two angles are congruent because we just created a bisector, then it's okay if it isn't perfect because you'll remember from marking it that way. Now let's label our ray KN. We need an N up here to make it K ray, ray KN. Okay. Now let's finish reading through our problem. The measure of angle JKN, so JKN would be this angle here, is 5x minus 25. The measure of angle NKL, which is this angle right here, is 3x plus 5. Sketch a picture of the situation, done. Then solve for x, that's what we'll do next. And then after you've solved for x, find this angle measurement. Not all of the problems ask you to do that kind of thing, but if they do, pay attention and make sure you know how to do it by plugging it back in. That's why we're doing an example, so that you'll know how to do it if you need to. Okay, solve for x. What do we know about these two angles? Do we know what they add up to? No, we don't know what they add up to. What do we know about them because of the bisector? We do know they're congruent. So can we just set them equal to each other? Yeah, that would work great, actually. So let's just go 5x minus 25 equals 3x plus 5 because those two angles are congruent. And that simply gives us an algebra problem to solve. What should we move where? Okay, so subtract the 3x to that side there. Cancels here. 5x minus 3x is 2x. Then we can move the 25 to the other side. So 2x equals 5 plus 25, which is 30. And then divide by 2. So x is 30 divided by 2, which is 15. There, I found the next part of my problem. Now what is the last part of my problem asking me to find? Find angle JKN. Well, don't I already know it? It's 5x minus 25. What are they asking me to do? I need to actually plug the 15 in place of the x. So it was 5x minus 25 is what they gave us, and we just found x is 15. So 5 times 15 is 75? Does that sound right? 75 minus 25, which means the angle is how big? 50 degrees. If each angle is 50 degrees, what are they going to add up to total? If this angle is 50 degrees, that means this one's also 50 degrees, so this entire angle would be 50 plus 50, which is 100 degrees. Does my picture look like that angle is 100 degrees? No, so my picture is not drawn accurately because I didn't know what the measurements were going to be. Did the picture still help me solve the problem even if it's not accurate? Yes. So it's okay if your pictures are not drawn to scale, not drawn accurately to the angles. They still can help you solve the problems. So we have answered all the questions at this point. Okay, let's look at the problems on the other side. You should have already done one through four. Let's start at problem five. Solve for x. If the measure of angle DEF 
and the measure of angle DEG are these numbers. Okay, for the following problems, EF is the angle bisector of angle DEG. So again, I always draw a picture. So we have angle DEG, and EF is the bisector. Okay, so that means this angle is equal to that angle. So always draw your picture first, then put the information in it. So angle DEF is 2x plus 14, so I'm going to write that in here. And angle DEG is 118. Now before you just suddenly start writing 118 right here, pay attention to the letters. Which angle is DEG? DEG is the whole thing. Since 118 is not just that little angle, can I just go this equals this like I did on the last problem? No, because this, we don't know this angle at all. We could say it's 2x plus 14, but then if we tried, if we tried setting them equal to each other, it wouldn't be solvable if it's the same stuff on both sides. But we do know the entire thing is equal to 118, and we know that these two angles are congruent. Can anyone think of some way to set up this algebra problem? I can think of two different ways to do it. need to be braver. Okay, this angle is half of the 118. What's one way we can set up this problem? Yeah, take the 118 and divide it by 2. What do you get? Half of 100 is 50, half of 18 is, half of 18 is 9. Okay, so half of the big angle would be 59 degrees. Does that mean that this thing, 2x plus 14, equals 59 degrees? Yeah. So now I have an algebra problem I can solve. 2x plus 14 equals 59 degrees, right? You guys go ahead and solve that for me. See if you can do that on your own. Okay, let's check the answer together. So we subtract the 14 from both sides. So 2x equals 45, right? Divide both sides by 2. It's an odd answer divided by 2, which means it's going to be a decimal. So 22.5 is the answer for x. Does the question ask us for anything else? Solve for x. Is it asking us for anything else? Nope. Can anyone think of another way of doing the same problem? Joy? So since these are equal, we could actually take and repeat this 2x plus 14 in both places. And then these two angles would add up to 118, right? So we could set them like we could go 2x plus 14 plus 2x plus 14. So we've got two of them equal 118. That should get exactly the same answer. If you don't believe me, you can try it. Okay, number six. Solve for x if angle DEF is 48 degrees and angle DEG, pay attention again to where the letters are, DEG, which angle is that one? It's the whole big angle, is 4x minus 12. Okay, again, what are some ways I can set up this problem? I can use the same two methods I used on the last one. I can either take the two angles added together equal the entire angle, or I can take the big <coughs> angle and divide it by 2. The reason that will also work is notice how these numbers are all even. So if we wanted to divide this by 2, it would just be 2x minus 6 instead of 4x minus 12. So that way it would work. Sh which way should we do it? If this angle is 48, what do we know about this angle? 
it's also 48. So that means that 48 plus 48, two angles that are 48 degrees each, would add up to 4x minus 12. Right? So that's one way to do the problem. Now what would we do? 48 plus 48, anyone know what that is? 96. And then 4x minus 12, I'm going to add that 12 to both sides. So that gives me 96 plus 12, what's that, 108? 108 equals 4x, take both sides and divide by 4. What will x equal? Let's see, 4 goes into 125 times, because that's a quarter, right? So then another 8, 4 goes into 8, 2 times. So 25 plus 2, 27. Okay, last one. Solve for x if FEG is x plus 4 and DEG, again it's the whole thing, is 7x minus 29. This problem can be done just like we did the last one, it's just instead of 48 plus 48, what are the two things we're adding together? x plus 4, x plus four and x plus 4 twice. So x plus 4 plus x plus 4, because we have two separate angles, equaling 7x minus 29, means we have 2x plus 8. So then we can either subtract the 2x or subtract the 7x. So which way would you rather do it? Go ahead and subtract the 2x. That gives us 5x over here. That one canceled. So now we have this negative 29 that we need to move over there. How do we do that? Add 29 to both sides. So 8 plus 29 is 37. Ooh, we're going to get a decimal this time. 5x equals 37. So x is 37 fifths, which you could find a decimal answer for if you wanted to.